we believe that Silas is gonna, our Silas is gonna turn the world upside down. Um, so we gave him that commentary on his life. At the time when I first saw Silas, five hours after being born, he was hooked up to a lot of tubes and monitors and covered. And I really just thought that he would be fine in a couple days and come home with us. Thought maybe there was like minor breathing things. We didn't really understand what was being on the monitors or anything like that. And it wasn't until that we were transferred that we realized, wow, he's in like a level three NICU. Our kid's really sick. And then it actually wasn't until he was discharged and we looked at the discharge papers and um, the medical certificate written by the doctors that we realized that um, our son was really close to death. So going into um, birth, I had these hopes and dreams and um, plans that Spencer and I would have skin to skin with our baby as soon as he was born, that we would connect, that we would just take time and let him discover breastfeeding. and. Um, then we would go home and just enjoy our first 24 hours at home with the baby. Our midwives would come over. So then when Silas' birth took a different turn and we didn't have those things, it was um, pretty easy to feel disappointed mm -hmm. and um, maybe look to the people who were having birth around me and seeing them at home with their baby and the quick responses to um, compare and feel like you somehow got shortchanged and then it was through the process of being at MAC that despite the disappointments we came to a place of accepting that this is our this is our normal and we had been hoping every day going in that it, the, the day would be for us to go home and then to hear a new timeline of maybe two to three more weeks um, was so uh, disappointing in that moment. He wasn't even 24 hours old that he was being transferred to uh, McMaster Children's Hospital. It totally broke us because I think in that moment, again, we didn't have all the answers and no one made us aware of how sick he was at that point, but we caught a glimpse of how, um, how sick he was and how close to death he was. And uh, just to be real, we, were, we went back to our hospital room and I was on the floor of our hospital bathroom just bawling my face off and not understanding why this was happening to him because um, he has such a great call in his life, as do we. I, I truly believe that, so I don't understand why this would happen. And I remember um, in that moment of desperation and being okay with questioning um, why this was happening um, in the same breath I remember exactly saying no God you're too good for this you're better than this um, and I think it's really easy to say God is good um, it's another thing when your son is close to death um, and in a moment of your heart being torn in two saying no God you're actually really good we made the decision that we were going to accept this as our normal and while it's different from someone else's normal um, this is where God has us and when we did that we began to actually um, start to enjoy the moments because even though snuggling Silas didn't look how I intended it to we still got to snuggle our son and I didn't want to miss out on those moments or those opportunities and even holding him for the first time five days after being born is not something that you imagine. And to be honest, that first time holding him, it wasn't this overwhelming moment that you thought it would. I had to remind myself that, that this is my child because up until this point, it had been a baby in an incubator attached to so many cords and now all of a sudden he's in my arms. This looks different than how I intended it to but this is real and this is our story and this is, this is where we are. Yeah, and I think throughout the process of, obviously not right at the beginning, but throughout the process of his journey at the hospital, we caught little glimpses of um, the fact that God really does work all things together for good, um, for our good and for his glory. Um, and I think we just got little tastes of that. And the more we experienced that or saw that in someone's life or um, like a family members who 
don't know God who, are, who, who make comments like we're just believing in faith or, or we're praying and that, that kind of thing. And we're catching glimpses of people understanding and God himself being revealed to them. It um, allowed us to hold fast to the fact and be okay with the fact that this is where we are and that God's going to do something with it and that it's not void or waste that he can actually work it out for our good and for his glory. So I think when we held on to that, it made um, everything become a lot more normal to us because we knew there was good coming from it.